Hello there. This is the field kit from Coma Electronic, an acoustic electric workstation designed, among other things, to allow everyday objects to be turned into instruments for music. It has seven functions, things like a four channel mixer, configurable inputs and outputs, an AM FM CB radio, and a DC interface to power external devices, plus a whole lot more. This is a Eurorack panel designed by Coma it allows for the removal of the field kit from its wooden box and for it to then be reinstalled into a larger Eurorack system. And in this video, we'll be looking at the honestly pretty simple process of converting the field kit to the Eurorack size panel, hopefully in an uncomplicated way to maybe give you some assistance and even confidence to make this modification yourself, should you be interested in doing so. This is an oddly specific short tutorial where we will remove the field kit from its wooden box, take away the front panel, reattach the Eurorack sized panel, and reconfigure the power to accept modular electrical connections. As always, if you do have any questions along the way, go ahead below. Otherwise, let's have a look. So first of all, uh, this is how the front panel comes. Uh, this kind of nice, uh, almost like brown lunch bag. Um, people often get nostalgic about things like video games and music, which I do as well, I completely get it, but there's something nostalgic in my life about brown paper bags. Uh, so yeah, here is the panel. Inside there are a few bits. Sticker of course, power cable for your modular system, which will be required, and some mounting screws and washers, that's always appreciated. Now the field kit comes with a really, really nicely made uh, instruction manual, uh, 50 ways to use the field kit. It pretty much goes through all of the functions on the front panel as well as 50 different patching ideas. I also have the FX uh, module already in the Eurorack form and it comes with a similarly really, really nice uh, instruction manual. I love when companies do that. But you do actually have very like quick, but yeah, pretty much perfect uh, instruction manual in the back. So just think of this video maybe as a companion piece, just just to get you an idea of what you might be doing and just how things will look on the inside. So we're going to keep this handy because we will need it because it's not just about removing some nuts and bolts and just slotting it in. There is a change you need to make on the back of the unit regarding power supplies. So first of all, we will need to be removing all of these nuts here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 nuts. That's pretty much what's just holding this panel on here. Uh, you should probably use something like a socket wrench just so you can get over these. Um, I'm going to assume they're not going to be too tight because they just seem to be metal nuts on plastic jacks. Um, I do have a small socket set, but I figure that most people probably don't. So I'm going to do something which looks terrifying and use some like a pretty square ended pair of pliers. Be careful of course, you don't want to go scratching anything and I know this is a pretty sort of coarse way of doing things but I figure this is probably something that most people will have on hand, any kind of pliers would do. Just be very careful, don't go scratching this really nice uh, metal plate on here. I'm just going to use these to loosen the nuts and then just uh, remove them by hand. Okay, so I've just loosened these. Now they should all just come off by hand because, you know, going at it with a pair of pliers again seems pretty coarse. So let's just use a little bit of finesse by hand. Make sure you keep all of these nuts though, because of course we will need to reuse these when we uh, 
replace it with the Eurorack panel, and look, here is a handy little container to keep those in, which is just the lid. Okay, finally, those nuts have all been removed. Now at this point, that should be all that's uh, holding this in. Apparently we should be able to carefully remove this front panel. sides here which uh, maybe <laughs> I do not understand anything like this as much as I wish I understood electronics I just really don't more than the basics um, I feel this is a good point as well to remind you if you are not confident with opening up electronics don't do this if you are going to do this of course make sure there is no power going into this thing I shouldn't need to be said but I'm gonna say it anyway do not work on anything electronic that's plugged in and do not do anything with electronics that you're just not confident with. This is all on you. You need to take absolute care here. Um, now the manual also does say when you are working on this, either removing the old panel or putting the new panel on, sometimes these LEDs might be a little bit out of alignment or get bent. They say you can bend them back. Um, so we're just going to avoid that whole area hopefully and just hope that it just doesn't even become an issue so the next stage there are four screws one in each corner these need to be removed and that should allow us to lift this out and then we should have the uh, the inner unit freed so Here it is, completely removed from its wooden box. Uh, yeah, it's just held in on these little pieces of plywood that have been screwed in. One of them's broken, but at this point, unless we, I mean, I've, I'm going to keep this box, you know, I might want to put it back in here someday or I'll find some other use for it. I see other people online using the box itself as part of the instrument, um, but that's not the point of this video here and now. So, here we have the exposed field kit. Now, on the back, you will see here your connections for Eurorack power. Here, there is a little jumper. This will need to be switched. Right now, it is set up for receiving power from your regular wall plug that comes with the unit. We'll need to switch that jumper from these lower two pins to the upper two pins. And as you can see here in the manual, which again is really, really, really well done. It's a great manual, it and the FX module. As it says here, having the jumper on the two topmost pins selects Eurorack power source, while the two bottommost pins selects the external PSU as the power source. For Eurorack powering, put the jumper over the two topmost pins. We're talking about right here. So, we remove this jumper from the two lower pins and we slide it over the two top pins. Now, in theory, this is now set up to receive Eurorack power. 
So all that's left now is to put it all back together, but this time using the Eurorack sized front panel. And again, you can see them together. They are pretty much identical. It's just size difference. And again, as they seem to really stress, make sure when you put this panel on, that the LEDs do not get bent. Apparently you can bend them back, but again, it's something you could probably be careful with, just so it's not an issue that you'll have to deal with, hopefully. Well, that actually went on very smoothly. Um, yep, all the LEDs seem to be nicely seated. So now we just have to get back to adding all of these nuts back to their original place. Okay, so these are all finger tightened right now. Often when I'm doing this kind of thing, I just like to, you know, just make sure everything is properly seated. Which it feels pretty solid. And then maybe just go back and just give everything another little finger tighten. See, just moving that around, I can actually, a few of these I've been able to turn like, oh yeah, this one quite a few times. Often these things just need a moment to settle. And once I've re-finger tightened these, which I'm almost done, I'm going to get the pliers again and just give it the slightest of further tightening. Um, there's no instruction really on the correct tightening method. Um, this is just how I'm doing it. Um, and again, remember, these are plastic uh, threaded jacks. So don't over tighten. You're going to strip it. And again, be very careful. You don't want to go scratching anything. So. All right. I think we've gotten away with that. Okay. Flip it over. Remember they've given us our modular power cable. Red stripe. Red stripe. Let's get this in and then we'll get it over to my rack over on the other side of the room here and we'll make sure that we're all good to go. I always get extremely nervous at this point even though it's clearly labeled and I've clearly have all the pins in the correct holes and I'll be mildly panicked until I get it plugged in and know that it's working properly. But <laughs> that's just how I do things. So yeah, let's head over there and give it a go. Here we have a big empty space in my rack here. And below that empty space is the Coma Electronic Field Kit FX module. This looks like a great place. So let's get it plugged in, make sure it all fits and powers on properly. see just some of these lights come on here we go and I think we are good and there it is fits perfectly powers on and now we're ready to go well thank you for watching I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have any follow-up questions or even just comments, go ahead down below. I'm really active in my comments sections as I love talking about this stuff and I really love to try and help people out. If you did find the video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. 
it's always appreciated and it will help make the video be a bit more visible so people like yourself might be able to find it more easily. If you haven't already, also consider a subscription. It's always appreciated and it's really helpful for small, independent synth channels like this one just to be a bit more visible and competitive. Regardless though, I hope you found the video helpful, I hope to see you again, and I hope you're doing well. Cheers.